What's up guys, Readiness Reviews here with you again, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at one of my newest military surplus rifle acquisitions. This is a Japanese Type 30 rifle with the hook safety. This particular example is a Type 30 training rifle. Before we take it over to the desk to get a closer look at it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, and if you are into military surplus rifles, be sure to subscribe to the channel, because at the moment, more than 80% of my audience is not subscribed. Now let's get this long boy over to the reviewing desk. All right, so here is my new Type 30 Arasaka rifle. On my channel, we've gone through some phases of my collecting. We sort of made it through my Swiss collection over the course of a couple of years, and you saw my Carcano collection grow as we went along. Recently, I've sort of switched into my Japanese phase of collecting to try and fill some of the holes in my Japanese collection. So I picked up this Type 30. The reason that we're not doing an unboxing on this is because I bought it at auction. Since it was a one-off, I figured it was better just get straight into the video. The only true Arasaka rifle, the Type 30, was developed by Narikara Arasaka, who at the time was a colonel at the Koishikawa Arsenal in Tokyo. In 1895, the Imperial Japanese Army decided it was time to replace their very dated, single-shot, large-bore black powder rifles, the Type 22 Murata, in favor of a modern, small-bore, smokeless, repeating rifle design to get them caught up with what the rest of the world was doing. After a couple years of development, the Type 30 was adopted in 1897, which was the 30th year of the Imperial Meiji rule of Japan. The rifle wouldn't actually enter service until about 1898, 1899, but by year 1900 most of the Imperial Army was equipped with the Type 30. The service life of the Type 30 as Japan's primary infantry arm was fairly short, coming to an end in 1905. Over the span of eight years, about half a million of these rifles were produced. In Japanese service, the Type 30 saw action in the Boxer Rebellion and more predominantly the Russo-Japanese War, and outside of Japanese service, the Type 30 would go on to be used by other countries all over the world during and after World War I, but I'm going to save some of that history just in case we do a future video on a live-firing Type 30. The Type 30 was replaced in Japanese service by the Nambu-designed Type 38 rifle, which will also be a future video. From around 1905 through 1921, about 10,000 Type 30 rifles were converted to blank firing training rifles. And that is what we are talking about today. In this conversion, the rifled barrel was bored out to a smooth bore for use with blank training ammo. I'll insert some footage of the bore right here so you can see it. In this particular rifle, you can see where it used to have rifling. Just fairly faintly, you can see a little bit of twist left in there. It is certainly smooth bore though. They removed the Imperial Chrysanthemum flower from the receiver and the markings that would have designated this a Type 30 rifle. Those markings were replaced with these new ones, which apparently read something to the effect of blank firing gun or blank firing rifle. The practice of having blank firing rifles would continue well past the Type 30 in Japanese service as the Imperial military gained more power in Japan leading up to World War II, tons of training rifles were produced. It is very common to run across both Type 38 and Type 99 training rifles. Japan had an extensive cadet-like program nationwide prior to the Second World War to get the country's youth ready for the wars of conquest to come. Now the Type 30 is a full-sized, full-length service rifle for sure. It is very long and stout coming in at eight pounds 11 ounces overall length of 50 inches the barrel length 31 inches and it's sporting a five round box magazine now my particular rifle is actually in darn good shape the line where the two-piece stock is is very faintly visible you have to know what you're looking for to even see it. On some rifles, you'll see this much more opened up, and they'll do that over time depending on, you know, what the rifle has been subject to as far as humidity and stuff like that goes over the years. This one is still well put together. The wood itself is in real nice condition all over, a couple little dings and dents, but nothing too serious. The metal finish is still a, a nice blue. It has a little bit of patina on it, which is, of course, rust, on the bolt especially and in various spots around. But overall, I'm very pleased with the condition of the rifle that I received 
from the auction that I won. This rifle still has the original Type 30 graduations on the rear sight. So some Type 30 rifles you'll run into will have an updated rear sight. The sights were changed because the ammunition that the Japanese used was changed from an older bottlenose design to an updated pointed spitzer design. And when they changed from the round nose to the pointed bullet, the ballistics changed a little bit and so they had to update the sights, but this still has the old sights. The very top V-notch here is 2,000 meters. If folded up, the bottom notch is 400 meters. And I'm actually not quite sure what the folded down battle sight is. It may be 400 meters as well. That was pretty common for the era, but it could be as low as 200 meters. If you know the answer to that, let me know down in the comments because I'm not quite sure about that one. This is a very standard ladder type sight, very common to that of Mausers and various other designs from the era of the late 1800s. The front sight is a triangular barley corn. So that gives a fairly standard sight picture. The markings on the side of the receiver remain from before the conversion to a training rifle. So that is the mark of the Koishikara Arsenal in Tokyo. And this rifle is serial number 767. I'm not sure what these two little kanji here are, but if you can make that out, and know what those are, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know. So if you look at a Type 30 and a Type 38 Arasaka side by side, the first thing you'll notice that's different is the bolt. The bolt on the Type 30 has this very distinctive hook on it, which I actually quite like. It gives you the ability to very easily, with one finger, safe the rifle, which locks the bolt closed. And you can take it off safe just as easy. It will also allow you to cock the rifle. So if I decock it right quick, it gives you second strike capability on your round. If you just pull it to the rear again, the rifle is recocked. The bolt release on the Type 30 is very similar to that of early Mausers, like the 1891 Mauser. And everything with this bolt is eerily similar to the German 1888 commission rifle. Let's remove this bolt so we can get a better look at it. So like the 1888 commission rifle, it has a removable bolt head. It very easily comes off. There's our firing pin in there. These bolts are quite difficult to completely disassemble, so I'm going to pass on doing that today. Now, the bolt on my rifle is missing a couple parts. It's missing the extractor, which goes on one side, and there's another part on the other side, which I'm assuming aids in extraction as well. Those two parts are missing. The bolt itself has two sturdy locking lugs, and something sort of odd with Type 30s is the bolt handle is slightly slanted forward. I've seen this on every Type 30 I've looked at, so it's not a one-off where this one just got bumped up against something and bent. They're all slightly sweeped forward like that. The bolt knob is almost spherical. Of course, that changed the further you get through Japanese rifle development. But just looking at the bolt, you can definitely tell it has some similarities to both the 1888 commission rifle and early Mauser designs. It reminds me a lot of the 1891, but it also has some aspects of 1893 Mausers. You see that a lot in the way the receiver's put together with a closed bridge receiver, stripper clip guide. These two holes are gas vent holes, just in case you have a ruptured cartridge. So to dump the magazine, we just push this little lever in the trigger guard forward, and it pops out. The whole spring assembly comes out in one piece. The unique part of this is this round spring. Later Arasaka rifles will have a flat spring. This one is round, and I think it's pretty cool. You can actually see how that round wire is wrapped around itself to close off the end of the spring there. Pretty interesting little design choice. The follower is very similar to what we would see in later designs. Like many military rifles of the era, the bolt locks back on an empty magazine. So if there's no rounds in there, the follower pops up and stops the bolt from closing. And that prevents soldiers from firing an empty rifle in the heat of combat. We can't talk about Type 30s without talking about the Type 30 bayonet. This is the iconic Japanese Type 30 bayonet that served all the way through World War II. Now, of course, the deeper you get into the war, the more different these look. They lost the quillion, the grips change, the sheaths change, but the basic bayonet remains the same. It's an extremely long blade with thick blade stock. The Japanese love their edged weapons, and you can definitely tell that in their awesome bayonet. The Type 30 rifle was the first rifle to use this bayonet. And I guess they liked it so much, they just stay with that same pattern all the way through the Second World War. The front nose cap has the bayonet lug on it. This is very reminiscent of an early Mauser design, an 1893 Mauser to be more specific. That's held on by a spring on the bottom. That'll look 
very similar to a lot of guys that know their Mausers. And while we're up here at the front, the middle band here is also very reminiscent of an 1893 or 1895 Mauser with a spring holding the band rearward. Partially exposed barrel, bayonet slides into place and locks on nice and secure. That's not going anywhere. And with the bayonet on this rifle, it is super long, much taller than the average Japanese male of that era. As I said, when we were doing the historical rundown, there were only 10,000 of these rifles produced. So of the roughly just over half a million Type 30 rifles that were made, only about 10,000 were taken out and converted to these blank firing rifles. So on numbers alone, this is actually the most rare rifle in my entire collection. I don't have any other rifle that there were 10,000 or less made. So that's a cool little addendum. Being a blank firing rifle and not a full live fire weapon, these are not as desirable as the rarity would call for. So these are not super expensive, but they're not really cheap either. A Type 38 training rifle or a Type 99 training rifle will be far less expensive than a Type 30. And I'm glad I was able to add one to my collection when I did. In the future, I definitely want a full live firing Type 30. But for now, having the training rifle in the collection is a nice little stopgap. And this is an excellent wall hanger. It's a very nice example of the rifle. If you are in the market to purchase a Type 30 rifle, be very careful that you don't buy a training rifle by accident. On a Type 30, you definitely want to look for the chrysanthemum. For the most part, they will still be on those rifles. They might be slightly defaced, but they're very rarely all the way scrubbed off like they are with later Arasakas. And the markings will look different from this. If you see these three markings, know that it's a smoothbore rifle. And that goes for all Arasaka rifles, actually. They can be a little bit tricky if you don't know what you're looking at, especially on auction websites and stuff. You can buy something thinking it's a live firing weapon and you'll actually get one of these blank firing firearms if the seller didn't spell it out in clear enough English. All right, guys, well, that was the video. Sorry, no shooting segment in this one. Unfortunately, I don't have Type 30 blank ammo laying around, but it was a cool one to add to the collection regardless. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. That helps us out with the Google algorithm and gun channels need all the help they can get because Google does not like guns. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future videos. Let me know what you thought about this rifle down in the comments. If you noticed something on this that I didn't talk about, please let me know. And let me know what you think about Japanese rifles in general. I, for one, love them. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. See you then. Peace.